What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the basic text element. The most basic of all elements inside Bricks Builder can be supercharged with just a little bit of CSS and HTML. So we're gonna talk about how we can add animations, we can add styling, and we can even add links into the basic text element using span tags, a tags, and a little bit of HTML and CSS to make all of this happen. So let's dive into the builder and see how to build this. And I understand this might look a little ridiculous, but what you'll learn from this tutorial is how to incorporate some of these concepts into your own builds and projects when you need a little bit more out of your text element, but you wanna keep it nice and simple and not have a lot of different elements in the structure panel. You can just add it to the basic text element with HTML. So that's what we're gonna to learn today. So let's dive into the builder and see what is up. Okay, we're inside the builder and I wanna take a look at the structure panel first. We've got a section, a container, and a basic text element. And then over here in the basic text content section, we have text, we've got some HTML, some CSS styling, and some classes. So let's just look at this first word called supercharge. So all of this is to make supercharge do its thing, which is the gradient text, the underline text decoration, the colors, and then there's this class called bounce. So all of this here is just for supercharge. I'm gonna demonstrate a couple ways to do this. So first off, let's talk about the styling. So we have our open span tag, then we have style equals, and then everything in our styling will go inside these double uh, quotes. So all of that is just for our hard-coded style. Then we have a class equals bounce, close span tag. So let's take a look at bounce which is stored in the child theme. So inside my child theme on the styles.css, you can add CSS here. And I have a keyframes called bounce, and it's going from zero to 100% transform translate Y. And then at 50%, we're gonna go up to negative 10 pixels, so it's gonna translate in the Y plane, negative 10 pixels, so up and then back down. So from zero to 100, it's zero, and then at 50%, it's gonna hit negative 10. So this is a very typical keyframes that you can write, or go to ChatGPT, have it write some keyframes for you if you wanna do some advanced stuff. Then I have this class called dot bounce, and dot bounce is only going to apply on span elements that do not have the class ignore. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. This not ignore is really handy if I want to have some other span elements, but I want to say, hey, I want you to ignore certain things with the ignore class so that it doesn't, you know, bounce up and down. All right, so let's go see how all that's working and unwrap that. So I've got bounce here, which is gonna make this bounce. And then I also have gradient span on the text element. So that means if we look at the CSS for gradient span, this is looking at the root selector, which is gradient span, making sure it's on a span tag so that what we're saying is only apply it if it's wrapped in a span tag and also it doesn't have the class ignore. So that's the gradient span class. I've also applied this to any a tag that also does not have the class ignore. And all we're doing here is giving a background color of a linear gradient 90 degrees with blue and red, which makes that kind of cool effect. And uh, a few other CSS properties uh, for our WebKit friends and the background clip is set to text and our text color is transparent. So that's all the CSS required to make this effect. So don't get too hung up on the CSS. That's really not the point. The point of this video is how to get it into the basic text element. 
So back to this uh, supercharge word here, we've got gradient dash span just on the text element. So it's only going to target anything wrapped in a span or an A tag that doesn't have the class ignore. So again, we talked about storing our CSS here. And of course, we could come over here, grab this, throw that into our global uh, child theme style sheet, and it would work just the same way. But there's multiple ways to do this with Bricks Builder. So I'm showing you all the different ways you can do that. You, again, you're going to have to figure out which workflow works best for you. All right, so let's go down to this A tag here, which has a link to advancedthemer.com because advanced themer has a shortcut to style your basic text element. And we're going to turn that on in just a second and see how that works. So you can wrap this A tag with the words links to click. So it says you can even add links to click. And so what we're doing here is applying the gradient span. If I were to say class equals ignore, now you'll see that it's ignoring that uh, gradient effect take that away, it's going to come right back. So that gives you a lot of power using the ignore class to kind of control where you're doing things. Let's look at it one more time. We're saying the root selector gradient dash span, not ignore. So apply to only span tags that don't have the class ignore. That's really all that's going on. So that's super cool. I use that sometimes when I need to have a little flexibility and write as little CSS as possible. Okay, so let's just do a basic text. I'm gonna add a section, container, move this to the top here, and let's just build this out a little bit, just so that you can see how it's going. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna type something like, this is an example, and what you would do is wrap example in a span tag like this, come to the end, close your span tag like that. And now you're set up. This is to get your basic setup here of what you want your span styling to control. I'm going to hide this section really quick. Let's hide this element so we're not distracted and just start focusing on this word example. The first thing we were talking about was style. So inside your first span, the opening tag here, you just put style equals and then open quotations, close quotations. So open double quotes, close double quotes. And we're going to say font size 50 pixels. So now that is going to bump up that size quite a bit. So that's the first thing you can do using the style. Um, then you would put a close semicolon here, just like you're writing normal CSS. And then you can add another uh, rule here like color var primary. So it even accepts variables. So you can add variables to it. And if we wanted it to bounce, what we would do is come to the end of the style. So this is style right here. Come to the end of that double quote that's wrapping everything in your style. And then we would add a class, class equals, and add your double quotes. And so now you're set up to add classes, and we would say bounce. And it's gonna start bouncing just like that. Let's see, if we were to say class ignore, so even though we have bounce, the ignore is overriding that. 
So you can add all kinds of classes. I don't know really why we would do that. And then to get that gradient text up there, let's see, I don't want that. I want this right here. Add a class gradient text, our gradient span. And we can control the gradient span color, but you'll notice it didn't do it because when you have a style, this takes uh, precedence. It has a higher specificity. So when you say color primary, it's going to ignore this class. So just delete that. And now you've got uh, that really cool bouncing uh, gradient text. So what you need to take away here is that specificity matters. And when you are styling, exactly on the span tag that is going to override everything that's kind of like almost id level styling there so you have to be careful with what you're doing and figure out what workflow works best for you okay so that's the one example using gradient span another way to do it is with styles and then another way to do it is with classes stored in an external style sheet in your child theme so those are three ways that you can really power up your basic text element. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to hop over into the advanced themer theme settings. And we're going to take a look at the builder tweaks to make this even faster. So you don't have to have advanced themer, but the whole point of advanced themer is to make your life faster and easier. So I showed you the hard way to do it. We're going to turn this advanced text wrapper on and then save my settings here. And you'll see what happens quickly when I save and refresh the builder. We're going to reload this. Unhide my element. And now you'll see these controls that say unwrap or wrap. Let's just add another basic text element real quick underneath here. Let's hide that one. So let's say select any part of your text and click wrap. Boom. You just wrap that with your span. And now we're set up ready to just say let's bounce. Let's bounce that part. Um, so advanced themer makes it really easy to just wrap and unwrap certain things. So if we were going to select that again, click unwrap, it's going to take it away. Same thing, you have other ways to wrap things like with an A tag. So if we were to say this is a link, highlight it, select A tag, wrap. So now we're going to have a link wrapper. And all we have to do is put our href equals. And what we want to do is add https dot dot slash slash bricksbuilder.io. And that link will take us over to Bricks Builder when we click it. OK, there we go. So save real quick and then talk a little bit about wrapping this video up. So what you see here are a couple different ways that you can make your basic text element do a little bit more than it normally would if you were just using it to put text. If you're going to do it another way without this method, you'd have a section and a container, a basic text, and then you would say, if you are interested in speaking to us, and then you might duplicate that, you would say click here, and then change this to an external URL, and then, you know, https dot dot slash slash example.com slash contact you know you'd have to do that and then maybe change the styling over here you know this just is a lot of work to like make this kind of look good and 
work for you. You know, like this is, this is a lot of work just to get this effect. So it's much better if you just write the HTML in the basic text element like this, rather than trying to deal with all of these extra divs and extra P tags and extra stuff that you don't really need. Okay, so thanks for watching everybody. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments or find me on Facebook. If you have any uh, specific things you're looking for, let me know. Uh, this was a tutorial on HTML, CSS, and how to supercharge the basic text element. It can be quite powerful. All right, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. It helps me run this channel and I will continue making videos just like this. All right, have a great day, everybody. See you in the next one.